This is Khalil Hunter, officer guard from University of Louisville, and you're listening to On the Fence Side. It ain't the left side or the right side, and it must be the fence side. Inside. It ain't the left side. Thank you, Solo D. Welcome right to another right episode side. of On the Fence Side as we approach the NFL draft. Here with Brian Cat Catanzaro and Paul Pick, and you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, YouTube, and on iTunes. Catching up on current Miami Dolphins news, we have a little bit going on before the NFL draft does kick off, and then we're going to have a lot of news to talk about here on the Fin side over over those three to five days. First, uh, Paul, Jarvis Landry does show up uh, for minicamp or organized team activities here for the Dolphins, even though he is looking for a new contract. What do you think? How do you think this contract situation is going to play out? I think it's a good step for him in terms of negotiating for that new contract. Adam Gase, the front office in Miami now, they're trying to build up this culture of we want to be here. We want players that want to be here. And Jarvis is participating, which is a huge step forward in terms of that. If Jarvis was to hold out and and play it out looking selfish, that might almost be a negative with this front office and with the culture that they're trying to build. So I'm, I'm very happy to see him there. I am probably one of the only people who, had, in terms of his contract talks, would not just basically – I mean, a lot of people's opinion on Jarvis Landry is, hey, pay the guy whatever he wants. He wants to be here. He's such the heartbeat of the team. And, look, you're not a Dolphins fan if you don't like Jarvis Landry. I mean, that's it's as simple as that. And so I like him. Uh, I love the guy. But the reality is – I don't know if I love him 13 or $14 million worth. That, that's what it comes down to for me, especially when the Dolphins seem to do better when they're pouring their resources into positions other than wide receiver. But $12 million a year is where I would draw a line in the sand. And given that T.Y. Hilton and some of these other players have gotten $13 million a year over the last year, year and a half, uh, I do think it will be north of that. Paul, uh, do you have a certain tap-out point with Jarvis Landers? I think the 13 to 14 million range is definitely where I would call uncle. Uh, he, he, he is a catalyst for this team. I, I will give him that. I love Jarvis Landry. Nobody's debating that either of us do. But I also have that little bit in the back of my mind that says if they're able to lock him up, even if it costs 12 million, hopefully not more a year, suddenly you look at this offense and I know Juwan James is, entering essentially the final decision point here for whether they pick up his fifth-year option. But suddenly, outside of offensive guard and when Mike Pouncey eventually goes down at center, you've got the entire offense locked up for a while and with some pretty damn good players. So uh, I go back and forth on this. I'd love to see Jarvis stay in Miami. I, I think everyone would. But if he's starting to talk... 14, 15, 16 million a year, ah, there's some other guys I'd like more. Yeah, I, I can't do it at that point. And I, you know, a bigger piece for me is that, like I've said before, I believe if Devontae Parker takes another step up and stays healthy this year, I think he's going to be the star wide receiver of the offense. And Jay Ajaye, we can expect if he stays healthy to get 300 touches. I would hate to pay 13, 14, 15 million to a guy at that point. You know, you still have Kenny Stills on the office. You still have Julius Thomas. Is Jarvis Landry going to be a player that's only going to catch 70, 75 passes for 900 to 1,000 yards, and now you're paying him 13 to 15 million a year. But the bigger point is Paul and I love Jarvis Landry. We're just not sure if we love him 13 to 15 million dollars worth. <laughs> Moving on, Paul, uh, Damian Williams has talked to the uh, New England Patriots. You know, it doesn't surprise me given Bill Belichick's love of these versatile players. Damian Williams can play in a lot of different roles. He can hold his own carrying the rock. He's very good in the passing game, very good in protection. Uh, But they also did sign a former Miami Dolphin who's really taken off since the Dolphins cut him, and that's Mike Gillisley. So, Damian Williams, what do you think? Is this Would this be a big loss? Do you think he would consider, the Patriots would still consider him at this point? If Mike Gillisley's offer is not matched by the Bills, I I think Damian Williams is is essentially out for the Patriots at that point in time. And – in which case I think he definitely comes back to Miami on the restricted tender. They're both very versatile, and Damian Williams would be a hit. I do see Kenyon Drake as a guy that could take some of those touches, but essentially if you've got Damian and Kenyon Drake, you're pretty well set at the running back other than a fodder body, essentially, that's going to be inactive on game days behind them. And I like the role that Miami carved out for Damian Williams last year. He may not see a lot of touches, but they're all high-quality touches when he does because they might be a goal line carry. They might be 
that bubble screen that might be, you know, little quality touches that are critical for the offense that either end up being a score or a first down in most scenarios. So I like him, and I think he adds another element to the kick return game if there is an issue. Yeah, and the guy has had eight touchdowns last year if you include the playoffs. I mean, uh, running back slash fullback helps you on, on game day too, especially one who's as good at special teams as Damian Williams is. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if the Dolphins do find themselves in a position where they lose Damian Williams, I don't think that'll happen because on Friday, uh, the restricted free agent deadline does end. Then I think the Dolphins can easily use one of those fifth round picks or seventh round pick to add another running back onto the depth chart if they feel it's necessary. But an- another thing that's been just really thrown out there, Paul, is cornerback Richard Sherman uh, and potentially being trade bait here as we approach the NFL draft. Would you consider him at 13.4 or 13.6 million a year? And do you think this is something that we should take seriously? Not for the Dolphins necessarily, but across the NFL. Honestly, the Seahawks asking price by all reports and while, while we don't know exactly what it is, sounds pretty high for him. And that's more of a deterrent for me than his 13.6 salary. I don't want to give up draft picks. Miami could restructure the quality of their entire defense with what they would have to give up to get another corner. And do I think Miami should take a corner in the draft? I do. But do I think they should sacrifice maybe the safety position or the defensive tackle position or the edge rush position to do so? No. They've got two very good starting caliber, arguably three very good starting caliber corners right now on the roster. They've got an okay nickel in Bobby McCain. And really, they've got some other young players that are ascending. So while Richard Sherman is very good, I don't think it makes any sense whatsoever to even be thinking about this at this point. And I don't want a me first guy on the team. And that's what he's really coming out to be this off season with some of the stuff that he's putting out there himself. Even if you put aside what the team is putting out, you look at what Richard Sherman himself is putting out in the media. It is very me first and goes 100% against this culture that we're trying to cultivate in Miami. Could not have said it better. I would not do it for a first, wouldn't do it for a second, wouldn't do it for a third. I wouldn't do it for our seventh round pick uh, for a lot of the reasons that you mentioned there, Paul. One reason is $13.6 million a year for a 29-year-old mouthy football player who is coming off just an okay season and is very scheme-specific. You know, I, Richard Sherman has had a hell of a career, but I'm through signing and trading for players who are 29 to 31 years old, which is a big pet peeve of mind of what the Dolphins have done this offseason. I think he'll end up staying in Seattle and having a few more productive seasons there. Another thing that's been talked about too is, and, and you know, a lot of teams are, are saying this at this point in the in the off season, close to the draft, is hey, we'd be open to trading down in the NFL draft if the right offer came along. Paul, would you taking a look at the board and who we expect to be there? Would you rather trade up or would you rather trade down or would you rather stay pat? My answer is very, very rarely ever a trade-up answer, especially in the first round. Uh, Last year, I did have the mentality of try to trade up if there was a scenario that made sense for the guy we ended up getting anyway. But I'm always a fan of accumulating picks where it makes sense. There is nobody I absolutely adore that I would trade up for in this draft. Now, I wouldn't want to trade back too far based on what I'd like to see this team get, and I know we're going to be talking a lot about, but trading down, say, if Forrest Lamp is on the board, that would be an ideal scenario because you look at the Seattle Seahawks, who have the most glaring hole in the NFL at left guard right now, it seems, other than maybe the Jets, and you might be able to work something to move back to 26, still get the guy you want, and pick up a third, pick up a fourth, something along those lines. So Miami could set themselves up well without moving back too far, and that's what I'd like to see them do if that scenario appears for them. Me too. I'm right there with you. I rarely have seen a trade down opportunity that I don't like. And uh, yeah, if the Dolphins are sitting there at 22, you mentioned Forrest Lamp could be a possibility for a trade up with an offensive line hungry team like the Seahawks. Uh, Also to the quarterback situation, you know, who knows how that's going to go. We could see all the quarterbacks on the board when the Dolphins pick at 22. We could see though, you know, three go in the first 20, 21 picks. And then from that point, maybe teams like the Steelers or the Browns are thinking about moving back up 
to take a look at a Deshaun Kaiser or a Davis Webb to make sure that they still have somebody in the pipeline that can be a successful quarterback for them. Yeah, I'm with you too. I, I don't see a player right now that I'd be comfortable trading up for. You know, Jonathan Allen and Reuben Foster, both from Alabama, would be big hits on defense. But I'm also starting to think too that if they fall down into that teen area, then I'm probably going to have some concerns about their injuries that they have. And I, I don't feel comfortable trading maybe a second or third round pick to move up for one of those guys when the rest of the league is starting to say, yeah, we're a little bit iffy on those injuries. So that will wrap up for us on this episode of On the Fin Side, recapping some recent news. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. I am Brian Cat Cat and Zero. And this is Paul Pickin joining me here today. And if it's not on the right side and it's not on the left side, it's on the fifth side. Solo D, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side. And it must be the